This video was brought to you by Stoltenberg, Abed Root Planner, Mr. Green, Ken Power, and Marcus Beal. Yo, what's up? We're now sitting in the BMW i4 M50. And in this video, I want to find out how do we drive in the most economic way without having to sacrifice power. So we're going to test a couple of stuff here. Um, normally, I'll be driving in... Wait, how? Let me do this. See here? I'll be driving in B mode. Some people, they, they are evangelists and they always use D mode because they claim that that's better. Well, let's find out with this car. Is B mode worse than D mode, all right? Another thing I'm going to check out. You see here we have some uh, mode buttons here. So um, we have sport mode. Well, yeah, we have sport individual sport. We have the comfort mode and we have the eco pro mode. So in the eco pro, uh, the HVAC uh, settings will be reduced to save energy. But uh, we're going to take out that variable in this test now by turning off HVAC. So let me see, how do we do that? By the way, usually there's like an on-off button. But I guess you just have to do it like... Oh, uh, okay, this is... Uh, uh, all right. Yeah, how, how do you turn off uh, HVAC? Now it's off. Okay, all right. All is good. So it's 17.5 um, degrees Celsius outside. We are now spending... Oh, big face pump. We're spending uh, 0.5 kilowatt hour per hour. Uh, the Germans, they are so stubborn. But okay, so we will drive this stretch now at the uh, cleavage. Oh, the lag. Okay. We will drive here and back again. And I've done this many, many times before. We get really consistent results. So, okay, I will show you guys soon. But uh, the now, let's see. Okay, let's start with... Maybe we should first test the difference between... D mode and why, why am I there? Let's test the difference between D mode and B mode first. Maybe I can just start with D mode. Why not? So I'm going to be using comfort mode. And then if you swipe down here, driving settings, drive chain and chassis, you see in D mode, we just set it to adaptive, which I think most people have it on. So we can have it set it to high or some of the other ones or low, but we just set it adaptive and then see what happens now. So yes, we have dry roads and not too much wind. And I'll be cruising at 110 kilometers per hour in the speed, which is roughly 106 or 107 kilometers per hour GPS speed. So I was hoping to do this at night without traffic, but there seems to be a little bit of traffic. But okay, so hopefully they don't give me any drafting effect. I run one in comfort mode and D mode, 187 watt hour per kilometer. Right, let's use B mode then. Okay, see we have a little bit of traffic. That's the only thing that could make these tests uh, have some variation. So, uh, and also, by the way, the temperature is dropping a little bit. It was 16.5, now it's 16, so that could also affect it. But uh, I do it as this test at night to uh, minimize the, the variables, uh, which is basically just traffic. All right, round two, 190 watt per kilometer. It's so little variation that this is within measurement error. And actually in this one, I had the cleaner run than the previous one where I was semi-drafting behind. So okay, it counts when you're stationary, okay. German uh, software for the win. Well, okay, now let's see. Okay, so uh, what, no, uh, I've been using Comfort. How about we use EcoPro? Or right, EcoPro has been engaged. Let's see if that makes any difference. Okay, since it's getting later and later, then we have less and less traffic, which means a, a cleaner run. So uh, the temperature also is dropping, 15.5 degrees Celsius now. Yeah, Eco Pro in Eco Pro mode. Well, actually, in different modes than the the color scheme uh, in the actually in the head of display. Well, can you see it? Head of display and here and here changes to kind of reflect it. Huh? 190 watt upper kilometer, exact same, 191, okay, it was 190. Yes, so, um, hmm, no difference there. All right, what if we use sport mode then? Okay, I've been using sport uh, in dual, but let's, um, okay, this thing, in sport, you, you don't have, okay, um, I have to explain here. When you have comfort mode, I haven't tested comfort, but in comfort, at least in Eco Pro, you don't get all the power available, but you get it in, well, actually, you don't even get it in sport. You have to go to sport boost, then you will get the, the, the power available. So, um, um, which one should we go for? Uh, sport, let's go for the sport boost, All right? Let's go. 
Okay, I don't know if you can see the head-up display, but uh, it has a red line now. And then it looks like this in Sport Boost. So everything just tries to be a bit red. But, well, this one is still the same color. I guess you can change it, but uh, yes. So uh, now I want to see how much... Well, okay, by the way, here suddenly we have that boost thing. So uh, when you floor it, I'm not going to do it now, but when you hammer it, you get that boost for a limited time. I don't remember how many seconds. But this car, I think, doesn't have that power limit that uh, the Ford Mustang Mach-E is supposed to get. Uh, Mach-E GT is supposed to get. And actually, huh, these cars cost kind of similar. Hmm. Look, 191 watt hypergolomet. Same, but different. No, exactly the same. And I wanted to claim this. I wanted to explain why it is like this, because we drive at constant speed. We actually don't utilize that boost power. Uh, so that's why it doesn't matter which mode you are in. I guess this car does not change the way the drivetrain works, front, rear, buyer, something. Uh, so at least, uh, yes. Um, but I can also configure it. Um, the, one, the way I like it is that I go here, and let me see, you can see better here. Well, okay, I switch, I click. If you go sport several times, you can toggle between sport, sport boost, or sport individual. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay, I can show here. If you have it in regular sport, it will look like this. And then sport boost, then this boost comes up there. And then I have configured sport individual to also have the sport boost. So if you go to configure uh, here. So actually, I, I prefer the comfort. So I've been driving, when I normally drive, when I'm not testing anything, a uh, range test or anything, I will actually use this one for comfort, but I still have the boost power available in case I need to humiliate some fossil cars. And then steering, I also prefer comfort. But here, this is very important. When you have it in uh, on you know, these other modes, you will not get all the power, but here you get all the power available. So I guess we can try again. Okay, we can try again to see... Um, if we can get the, the same consistent result. Ah, shit. Okay, for the other runs uh, in the past, now I had a clean run, but um, in front of me, I have a truck without any trailers. So that will actually cause a slight drafting effect. So we can see uh, the consumption might be one, two watt hour per kilometer lower. Yeah, you see, I have to drive. Now we are roughly halfway on this loop and then I'm gonna turn around uh, after the downhill and uphill and then so roughly I guess yeah I'm not sure about aerodynamics but I think roughly at this point here I will get the drafting effect from that truck and then actually I wonder if there's a even a suck past it and then yeah roughly here then we don't get the drafting effect anymore so we will see how that affects the consumption right but it should be around 190 watt hour per kilometer anyway and then here at the exit this is where i turn around huh 190 watt hour per kilometer remember to a b c always be consistent so as a control test now this is something i learned from nokian when i went up there in lapland is you want to take a control test so now we go back to comfort and then we use D mode and we see what result we get then because the weather has changed since then. Wait, what? Shit. I fucked up. I was supposed to have it in uh, Eco Pro and D. Okay, whatever. But I have at least in Comfort and D. So that's similar to the test I've done before with, with Comfort and B. But I have a car in front now. Now it's kind of far away. Let me, let me try to count at the sign there. One, two, three four five six yeah roughly six seconds behind i think when you have that kind of long distance behind then there shouldn't be any drafting effect at all yep 190 watt hour per kilometer same but different so yeah what have we learned from this test well we found out that at least with the bmw i4 m50 now then there is no difference uh, in the mode when it comes to consumption as long as you are just driving at constant speed so um, of course it would be different if you utilize all the power in the boost mode but that's just pure physics uh, and also uh, when it comes to the d mode and the b mode again no difference there and what else yeah uh, I guess one last thing I could test, but I'll do that some other day, is the uh, difference between uh, D mode and B mode when you accelerate. So, uh, 
Yeah, this is just to kill some myth because there are so many Nisse in my uh, channel who claims that Oh Bjorn, you're driving in B mode is way less efficient than B, uh, D mode And then, oh no Bjorn, you are in... Uh, <laughs> just, you know, tomorrow I'm going to do 1000 km challenge, I will drive in the boost uh, sp Boot Sport... Uh, what is it called again? I can just set it now, by the way Sport individual. It will say sport in the, I'll show you here. So during 1000 km challenge, you will actually see sport individual here. You will see that everything is in sport mode, right? And then how many noobs will actually comment that Bjorn, I like your videos, but you're being biased toward Tesla and you've been driving in, in sport boost mode and the consumption is way higher. Uh, you have to redo this test. I'm like, mm. yes, remember to a, B, C, always be confirming your claims. Yeah. So anyway, I think that's going to be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.